You know, Lake Murray's one of the best tournament lakes in the country. Can in Lake Murray be one on a glide bait? Can it be one power fishing? Can it be one on top waters? Can the herring spawn and the shad spawn carry anglers to victory without relying super heavily on front facing sonar? Can, okay. Are we gonna see something besides? A lot of people think Lake Murray's gonna be a complete scoping event. I'm not so sure. I think we'll see shad spawn. I think we'll see herring spawn fish. I mean, I think we may see anglers using front facing sonar and electronics to accentuate what they're doing on those power techniques, but I don't think this is gonna be dominated by hanging a minnow and finesse plastics. It'll definitely play. People will catch fish, people will finish in the top 10, but I think we're gonna see a lot of power fishing and a lot of exciting action on Bassmaster Live this week. So let's talk about how that could and should affect your fantasy fishing picks for Lake Murray. And let's dive into what the strategy will be for this week and how you can win your chattyboys.com certificate for Beat Halibass. But first, let's see who did the best at St. John's River. So myself, I had an okay tournament, still up there, well within the dark green, 97.6% in the, you know, 734th in the country, which is which is pretty solid. We're, you know, uh, we'd like to be a little higher, but uh, we're not disappointed with where we're at and we're doing quite well in the pundit group. So checking in on the Beat Hellabass group, which uh, we might have to shut down pretty soon. We'll see. I think maybe we'll have to close it out before we head north here. And uh, kind of so those guys that are in the act, the end, year-end prize, nobody swoops in at the end. So congratulations for DLTSAO leading the group uh, right now. Our winner from the St. John's River, Brandon Hoolan. Uh, I'll be reaching out here shortly. 1320, that's a really solid score. You won by quite a large margin. Drain the Lake, St. John's River. Last chance, a Carpentier. A narrow four-point victory to get the uh, chattyboys.com gift certificate. So those will be coming out. If you haven't checked out chattyboys.com, they've got some spring sales. They've got some clearance, whether you're looking for a Garmin, a Hummingbird, a Lowrance, a new Minn Kota trolling motor. Lots of great things, really good deals. You can use code HBFREE to get free shipping on any of those sales. They have great customer service, fast shipping. I definitely, you should check them out. And thank them for supporting uh, the stream and the Fantasy Fishing Challenge. If you have won in the past, you should start to see those prizes and communications from me coming out very, very soon. I know several of you have reached out to me on Instagram DM. Thank you. We got everything squared out on the back end so we can start distributing those prizes. So we're in a good spot. Last year was a pretty epic tournament on Lake Murray. There was some really big bags out of the gate. Robertson had a really big bag. Uh, swim baits played, top waters played, spawning fish played. Uh, I think we're going to see some of that. Not so much spawn, maybe a few late straggling betters, but I think we'll see more shad spawn, more herring fish. It should be a really, really fun event. I remember when I was young, younger, and watching some of those early Clarks Hill events when they were fishing that herring spawn and all those top water fish. I'm hoping we see some of that on Bass Live, and I think a lot of you would appreciate that as well. Let's get into our picks. Big one. We will start with the traditional fancy fishing game. Then we'll hop over to Drain the Lake and talk uh, tiebreaker winner weights here as well. Let's start in bucket E. Matt Robertson getting the love. He's not having the best season, but he did lead day one and then up finishing 29th last year in 2023. This could be a good event for him. Big baits, things like that could play. So he is definitely something somebody to watch out for. So Fuentes, you know. Off to a really odd start after win, almost winning Angler of the Year, winning Rookie of the Year, and winning two events. He is struggling mightily this year in the Elite Series, which is really uh, interesting to see. There are some, some other anglers here. I did think about Bob Downey. He's doing pretty well in points considering he missed a whole entire event. So of the group, Bob's probably fishing the best of the Bucket E's, so that's somebody to consider. Uh, there's some other anglers that had good events here. You know, it's strange seeing Seth Fighter in this bucket. Cole Sands, one of the younger guys, pretty good with his electronics, could hear. But I, I'm gonna I'm gonna go Ike here. Mike Iconelli finished 11th. It was uh, he actually started last year pretty good. Had a 10th in Bainbridge on Seminole, and then an 11th on Murray. And I know he spent some time pre-practicing on Murray, doing a lot of graphing. And now that we're a little couple weeks later. That graphing of finding little rock piles and brush piles and all those little points and things like that should pay dividends. So I'm looking for a bounce back event from Ike in Bucket E. Moving into Bucket D, you got a couple of really good options here. Jason Williamson from the Carolinas, a really good herring angler, has won on Clark's Hill, which is a similar type body of water. Uh, you have Kenta Kimura, Austin Felix. You got some guys that are really good anglers with their electronics. Brian New has kind of moved and made Columbia, South Carolina, his new home. So he lives on the shores of that. So he's probably been putting some extra time in there. But I'm going to go Cobb. I'm going to go with the percentage. This has not worked out this year. Livesey, Christie on their home waters. Prince on the St. John's has not worked out. 
But I'm trying it again in Bucket D, going with Captain Cobb. He almost won a Forestwood Cup here. He knows how to fish those herring fish. He's really good with or without his electronics. I think Cobb, you can book him for a top 10 this week. Bucket C, we got some good English here. Polynix in this bucket. We've got, uh, you know, some sight fishing. You know, Drew Cook is a buddy of uh, Drew Benton, who won last time. And Drew Cook actually gave Benton some stuff, some crankbait fish to to propel him to the win on the final day as he didn't make the cut. If it's an electronics event, Taco Ito could be dangerous. Kyle Welcher had a really good, solid event here that kind of was kind of like got him, kept him in the hunt going in angle year at the end of the year last year. If it's a dock bite, Prosnick could be sneaky good. Uh, Will Davis proved he can catch him on Hartwell when he won the Bass Nation National Championship. So there's a lot of good options here, but I'm going to go with Shane LeHue. I'm going to go local, going to go with uh, one of the Carolina guys who does really well on these herring fisheries and really understands herring. Bucket B, Fujita, really strong tournament, did very well uh, last year, even as the spawn was ending. He should only be stronger. You have the defending champ, Drew Benton, you know, Christy. Starting to get his season back on track. You know, I can definitely see that Shad Spawn playing into his role, much like it did on St. John's River. You know, John Cox had a top 10 here. Interesting angle there. He likes to fish shallow. Those herring fish do get shallow. I could see that being good. Hackney coming off a good event on the Shad Spawn. There's some uh, Kennedy has had good events on Murray. He's due for a good event. He's always a risky proposition of fancy fishing, but this might be one of those times to sneak him in and, and take a swing with Kennedy. I could see him, you know, getting a swim bait out, you know, something like, you know, if we remember back to the old BPS swimmers of the olden days and Kennedy throwing baits like this, I could see these playing uh, over those shallow herring points. And as you can see, Kennedy having a really good event, but I'm going to go Walters, even though he's not in bucket A, I stuck with him and now he's had, two subpar tournaments in a row actually three if you count the classic i think walters is going to shoot himself out of this like steph curry and i'm looking for a big event for him and even though he's a favorite in this bucket uh, i'm going to take the risk and hopefully you know hopefully it's not a fool me once fool me twice type of deal Bucket A, I'm going to go a little sneaky here. Just wait for this one. You know, Jordan Lee's been catching them. Trey McKinney's leading the points. Those are obvious picks. Matt Airy, done well on Murray. He's from the area. He should do well. I would think JT Tompkins has fit his skill set. We saw we did with a glide bait, what he did on the Harris chain. That kind of stuff definitely could play at Murray. Hamner with his jerk bait. Shryrock uh, almost won this tournament last time we were here. The Johnsons are hot. Milliken big baits. There's a lot of good options. There's It's hard to pick a bad option in A. You could really throw a dartboard. But I'm going to go Tyler Williams, the main event. Here's my logic. He's catching them. He had one where he just missed the cut at St. John. So I think he'll bounce back here. I'm sure he's done his homework. I'm sure he's graft around. He loves to fish offshore. We're later in the year. He loves to fish a jig. Think back, like Davy Height, Clarks Hill, mop jig. Tyler Williams, I think it'll work here. Let's go over to Drain the Lake and talk about who I'm picking there. Drain the Lake, we're not quite as on fire here. 87%, but uh, we'll get there by the end of the year. It's a, it's a marathon for sure, not a sprint. I am going to take Erie, uh, taking Jason Williamson, the, the Tower of Power. We will take Brandon Cobb here, Shane LeHue, Brian New. We'll take a look at him this week. I did put Shryock on my roster this week. I did save Walters for this event, so I'm doubling down on Walters. Uh, hopefully that doesn't, doesn't backfire this week. And here's one that maybe is just a little bit off the radar here, lower percentage, but I think... With it being potential for a big bait event with the Shad Spawn, the Herring, I'm going with the Aussie. We're going to see if the Gloida plays this week. We're going with Carl Jacobson. Tiebreaker weight, I think 86 pounds, 4 ounces. You know, low 20 pounds a day it should be what it takes. It could be a little higher, but I think that's a good, safe bet. So Matt Airy, Jason Williamson, Brandon Cobb, Shane LeHue, Brian New, Hunter Shryock, Patrick Walters, and Carl Jacobson for the Drain the Lake. If you'd rather I just watch some fishing instead of this fancy vision stuff, you want know, to see my most recent tournament video where we didn't do a whole lot of front-facing sonar and just caught them fishing shallow, power fishing, check this video out on the screen right here.